I'm grateful that you're giving me 20 slides and in return I'm going to give you 20 years because you're slowly killing yourself and you don't even know it. The problem is you've been brainwashed just like Derek Zoolander was brainwashed by Magatu to off the Malaysian prime minister dude. And it's been happening to you since before you could read or walk. The problem is, is that children's literature has been filled with ageist propaganda. <laughs> Old people don't even exist in these pages, or they exist solely to make fun of, or of course to do what they do best, get sick and die. Television has been the worst offender ever since its inception, misrepresenting or underrepresenting older people, characterizing them as frail, feeble, and forgetful. And it's not just books and television. It's over-the-hill retirement cards. It's doctors prescribing medication before lifestyle modification. It's all of this. From the time you were born, our culture has been whispering demeaning ageist propaganda to you, convincing you that as your skin begins to wrinkle, your dreams begin to die. It's now not only in your head, it's been embraced by your soul. It's a ticking time bomb telling you that age is a disease and you have it. It's diagnosed every time by yourself that you get a gray hair, that you get a new wrinkle, that you get an ache or a pain, or you forget or you lose something. And that's what Growing Bolder is about. We're rebranding aging. We're deprogramming the world from the insidious cult of youth because you have been deceived by the culture. You have been misled by the media. You've been lied to by Madison Avenue and Hollywood, and even by your friends, your family, and yourself because aging is not a disease. It's an opportunity. And don't say, yeah, but I got bad genes. Genes only account for 25% of active longevity. Banana George Blair had bad genes, and he continued to barefoot water ski into his mid-90s. If you want to keep moving, you have to keep moving. A major study at the recent National Senior Games revealed that the average fitness age of the over 4,000 competitors was 43. That's 25 years younger than their actual chronological age, and this is important to you because as it turns out, fitness age is a better predictor of how many years you have left to live than your actual biological age. The most important lifestyle determinant of active longevity is your belief system about aging. And this, too, has been proven by countless studies. What the mind believes, the body embraces. My favorite study was done by Yale University. They took a large group of sedentary 80-year-olds, couch potatoes. They gave them all a baseline fitness test, and then they divided them into two groups. One group was exercised every day for six months. The other group, no exercise at all. But they were exposed to constant positive images of older people, powerful, passionate, interesting, intelligent, sexually engaged, socially active. And at the end of six months, they gave them another physical fitness test. And the group that did no exercise at all but was exposed to these positive images showed more improvement in their overall physical abilities than the group that exercised every day. What what the mind believes, the body embraces. So the question to you tonight is, what do you believe? If I ask you to close your eyes and imagine an oh, 80 or 90-year-old woman in a horizontal position, what do you see? If you see her in a pine box six feet underground, I can't mark your paper wrong, because that's where most 80 and 90-year-olds are. You probably imagined her in bed, sick, declining, in poor health, after years or maybe even decades of disease, disability, and morbidity. Unfortunately, that's the fate that many of us face. That's where we're going, including this woman who is 80 years old and who soon will be six feet underground. Less likely, you imagine the 90-year-old, Joanna Quas, who's a competitive gymnast who travels the world competing and hanging out with her friends. It is important what you imagined, because what the mind believes, the body embraces. May Laborde believed when she turned 93 years old that it was finally time for her to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an actress, something she had never done. So she did what any wannabe would do. She got in her car, she drove to L.A., she got an agent, and she worked continuously in film and television until she died at 102. Harry Bernstein was 93 years old when he started to worry about his mental acuity. So he got a typewriter and he began to jot out some childhood memories. He enjoyed the process, so much so that he turned his memories into a memoir. And at 97 years old, Harry Bernstein became a first-time published author. He would publish two more books before he died at 101, but not before proclaiming his 90s the greatest decade of his life. Ida Keeling was 68 years old when both of her sons were murdered. She became so despondent that her daughter, fearing that she might take her own life, forced her to go outside and start running. 
Running not only saved her life, it soon defined her life. You might have seen Ida all over the news recently when she set a world record in a 100-meter dash for women 100 to 104. <laughs> Lifespan is defined as the age of the oldest living individual in any species, and for human beings, it's 122 years, 164 days. Jean Clamont was not athletic. She didn't lead a particularly healthy lifestyle, but she loved life. She took up fencing when she was 88. She rode her bike every single day until she was 100, and she lived alone until she was 110. I know this because I wrote a book on active longevity based upon interviews that I did with the most active centenarians in the world. And here's what I learned. Here's what I can tell you tonight. Hold your friends closely because their value increases as you age. As we get older, low social interaction is more harmful to our health than alcoholism, obesity, or smoking. It's true. Here's what you got to do. Get a posse. <laughs> Find a passion. Stay active. You're hardwired to move. If you start moving, stop moving. That's a sign that you're going to stop dying. Chill the F out. Active centenarians don't stress about anything and laugh. Jean Clement was asked, what's it like to be so wrinkly when she was 120? And she said this, I have only one wrinkle, honey, and I'm sitting on it. Here's what you don't know about Jean. She smoked a cigarette every day for 100 years. She ate two pounds of chocolate every week until she died. But her passion for life, her joie de vivre, overcame her questionable lifestyle choices. So I ask you again, imagine an 80-year-old woman in a horizontal position. And if you now imagine this woman, you have just added years to your life. If you now imagine this woman... You're starting to get the idea. It's not about the length of your life. It's about the quality of your life. Aging is not a disease. It's an opportunity. Stop growing older and start growing bolder. Thank you.